right now reports are coming out across the country about COVID vaccine doses being wasted. A look at how Wisconsin is keeping track of this. And Wisconsin Republicans are looking to overturn the governor's statewide mask mandate and update on how many people are on board. Plus a reminder from healthcare professionals to think twice about how you plan to celebrate the Packers NFC championship game. This is News 3 Now at 6. And thanks for joining us from dro dropping temperatures to snow this weekend. We have alert days in the forecast. Let's take a look at when the snow will be moving through our area. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has your first worn forecast. Gary? Well, Charlotte, the first round of snow is expected from late tomorrow afternoon or more likely tomorrow evening through Sunday morning. We have an alert day in the forecast for that. Probably looking at about a one to five inch snowfall with the heaviest amounts northwest of Madison. A second system from Monday afternoon into Monday night brings the potential for more accumulating snow. Right now, the highest chances are south of Madison. There's going to be a sharp cutoff to the north. So it could be that there could be heavy snow in the southern part of our viewing area and very little in the northern part. We'll just have to see where that storm ends up. Right now, winter weather advisories in effect beginning at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon for our Western viewers is starting at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening for Dane County and areas to the north and west. They run through 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Again, future track snowfall about an inch or two down toward the Illinois state line, maybe four or five inches north and west of the Dells. Doppler track right now, pretty much free of precipitation. The storm that we're looking at still way off to the west. Temperatures have already started to fall. 18 was the high in Madison, Janesville, Monroe at 23, but right now temperatures are in the lower teens and wind chills are continuing to drop. Uh, for the most part, with the winds lightening up, they're not going to be that that bitter overnight, but still we're looking for an overnight low temperature of around two below zero by morning. Look for a high temperature tomorrow of 22 tomorrow evening as the clouds move in. The snow should start late tomorrow afternoon. We'll take a look more at when we can expect the snow in just a few minutes. Gary, thank you. While there are a few incidents nationwide of states failing to track wasted COVID vaccine doses or employees tossing vaccines because they had extra, Wisconsin appears to be on track for protecting and tracking its COVID-19 vaccine. News 3 investigates Naomi Coles explains. Wisconsin says their vaccine wastage has been minimal. That, of course, is with one glaring exception, the Grafton pharmacist who's accused of deliberately destroying about 500 doses last month. The DHS reported in an email just one vial accidentally left out too long, and in a press conference on Thursday, the DHS also referenced a vial lost in transport. Overall, the state and health officials say wasted doses in Wisconsin really hasn't been an issue. Our vaccinators understand this is a very precious resource and that we need to get every dose in people's arms. And the state requires all vaccinators to report and investigate any wasted vaccine and prepare a written plan of action for how to improve Prove afterwards. The state also expects vaccinators to use every available dose that's removed from storage. Any dose has to be put in an arm regardless of eligibility if, for example, an appointment is canceled. Reporting for News 3 Now, I'm Naomi Coles. Local hospital leaders say it's a good version of peer pressure that's leading to more health care employees getting the vaccine. Wisconsin health care systems are reporting higher vaccination rates than expected. SSM and Unity Point Health Merit are both tell us more than 90% of employees are saying yes to the vaccine. UW Health is close to that with just under 90% of staff agreeing to get vaccinated. Hospital leaders say it's encouraging to see employees make this choice. Wisconsinites ages 65 and older or become eligible to receive the vaccine starting next week. UW-Madison says it has notified about 1,800 people on campus that they can make an appointment through the university or their own health care provider. Along with those meeting the age requirement, people with direct contact with COVID patients or people researching on the virus are eligible. The university recently started vaccinating UW police officers as well. Wisconsin health officials confirm more than 2,000 new COVID-19 cases today. 34 more people have died. Almost 57,000 Wisconsinites are now done with their vaccinations. That's just under 1% of the state's population. The state Senate is scheduled to vote on a measure that will end the latest mask mandate. Amy Reid is live to explain why Republicans are pushing for this. Amy? Well, we've heard members of the legislature threaten this before, but this is the first time that Republicans have brought a challenge to the public health order this far. 
The full Wisconsin Senate is scheduled to vote on a resolution to kill the latest public health emergency from the governor. This is the same order that extended the statewide mask mandate. Republicans who are pushing for this are encouraging Wisconsinites to back it. They say the governor can issue one emergency, but not multiple for the same cause. The co-author of the resolution saying, from day one, I've been ready to repeal Governor Evers's unconstitutional edicts. The governor has grossly overstepped his authority. The governor's office replied frustrated given the legislature still hasn't passed more COVID relief since last spring. While Governor Evers works to keep Wisconsinites healthy and safe and distribute vaccines across our state, Republicans continue their efforts to hinder our state's response. Right now, 27 Republicans have signed on to the resolution, which isn't enough to pass it, but more could join during a vote next week. By law, the legislature can repeal a public health emergency with a resolution that passes both chambers. The assembly hasn't said if they're going to vote on it, but if this does pass, the legislature is unlikely to pass anything that requires masks. Republicans who control the branch have resisted such orders before, even amongst themselves, and they voted down efforts by Democrats to require masks in the Capitol. All right, we want to let you all know that this is Amy Reed's last day here at News 3 Now. And Amy, it has been such an honor and a pleasure to work with you. Yeah, Amy, you have had to cover some very difficult stories over the last year, and you've done a great job with it. So we wish you nothing but the best. And you'll want to tune in to uh, Amy's social media pages to find out what's next. So best of luck, Amy. SSM Health's new South Madison Clinic on Fish Hatchery Road is going up with the help of a diverse workforce. SSM set a goal of 8 to 10 percent diversity for the construction workforce. Regional President Damon Boatwright says he hopes this project becomes a model of best practices for the future. I think it has the real true potential of keeping communities together uh, versus div divisive kinds of projects uh, that cause more erosion in the trust that should be built up for long-term relationships to be established. Another goal for the project is providing a space for people to train in a mentor-protege program, a partnership between SSM, Findorf, the Urban League of Greater Madison, Operation Fresh Start is bringing that goal to life. It's more than just a resume, you know, they're actually getting that job shadow experience. This allows for people to see them work day in and day out for months at a time and um, gives them that kind of step forward to get a job. A diverse group of people interested in the construction trades are working side by side with Findorf's team, helping frame walls inside the new building. They'll return to the work site in March to help with drywall work. Doctors do not want you to pack in a bunch of people to cheer on the Packers with Sunday's NFC Championship game. They are reminding you to avoid going to crowded bars, even having a house party with people you don't live with. Dr. Jeff Potthoff says it's easy to get complacent, especially with the vaccine now and lower case numbers in Wisconsin, but he says a football watch party party can spread COVID. Uh, people are close together. They have their masks off because they're eating chips. They're drinking a beer or some other beverage. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're yelling and screaming. That's what we do uh, when we're watching the Packers play. And that is a near perfect scenario for that virus to get us sick. And, you know, what we really don't want to see. Dr. Pothoff recommends getting together virtually to cheer on the Packers. And Green Bay Police and the Brown County Tavern League are working together to make sure bars and restaurants are enforcing coronavirus protocols for the game. The police commander says he's saw alarming photos on social media during last Saturday's game showing fans packed together with no masks on. The police department's main goal is education and compliance. Officers will document complaints and provide them to the public health department. Sports director Zach Hanley will have a special report on the Packers' unprecedented season. What a year it's been. And a look ahead to their game against Tampa Bay at Lambeau Field Sunday. Watch Packers 2021 title town to Tampa right here on News 3 Now. That's tomorrow night at 6.30. Coming up next at 6, as more people become eligible for the COVID vaccine, with it comes a sense of relief and excitement for family members who will finally have protection. And there is more local news ahead. Tonight on News 3 Now at 10, teachers and faculty from the school district of Janesville are getting their first chance at coronavirus vaccines. We'll take a look at the plans tonight at 10. talking to you like that, you should just dump them.
McGann Furniture in Baraboo reminds you to be sure to ask about delivery options when shopping for new furniture. Because every store is different. Some stores have very specific restrictions, while others charge you an arm and a leg. At McGann's, we take pride in our skilled delivery team, and in most cases, delivery is free. And remember, at McGann's, we don't inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home or the blistering heat of summer without power. Then having to make the tough choice between eating or meeting other basic survival needs. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision with no place else to turn, including those who are now unemployed due to the COVID-19 crisis. Keep a neighbor in crisis safely in their home during these difficult times by supporting and donating to the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund today. Fusion has it all. Modern styling, spacious interior, plenty of power. Even help to inspire confidence. Ford Copilot 360. NHTSA 5-star overall crash rating. 5-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. So while life is full of compromises, Fusion isn't one of them. Choose Ford Credit Flex by in 2020 Fusion with 0% APR for 66 months with an increase in monthly payments after the first 36 months plus 3,500 cash back. Hey, Tom. Sheila. Hey, uh, don't take losing the Anderson business personally. I resigned it, Tom. I guess they didn't tell you about their opossum problem. I thought it was pronounced possum. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. adults get vaccinated, it can be a big relief, not just for them, but for their families. Madeline O'Neill shares what that can mean and what we should still keep in mind. Maddie? Well, like for everyone, this pandemic has taken an emotional toll, especially as I worry about my older relatives, my grandparents, my parents. So this is a personal story, like the pandemic has been personal for so many of us. I'm young, 73. Meet my young 73-year-old father, Patrick O'Neill. Finches, sparrows. Lately, he's been seeing a lot more of these. Do you have a favorite? The cardinal. Just so beautiful. Then his loved ones. I just don't get to spend the time with the people I'd really like to. Normally, I don't go long without seeing my dad. We always had adventures. We always took hikes. We took trips. We went to dinner. Bright points in my week. But I don't have to tell you these haven't been normal times. Not at all. I, I miss it. COVID takes an obvious physical toll, but an emotional one, too. No, I can't wait to see my dad. <laughs> so we can draw hope as more get vaccinated, including people 65 and up. Okay. And frontline workers at Unity Point Health Meritor. One of the first people to get our vaccine here at Meritor was one of our oldest ICU nurses. And there was a video of it, and I just was sobbing. And I definitely feel so... So much hope. No. Megan Henderson, a behavioral health clinical practice leader, stresses it's just the first step, but an uplifting one. We still need to mask and have some physical distance, but also know that this is a step. To sort of be in the moment with some of that, um, that happiness and let it be a light. A light guiding us back to normal days. Pretty odd. Yeah. The hope of their return, a big reason why I pushed my dad, who still works in health care, to get the shot this morning. <laughs> I closed it. I didn't look. <laughs> I looked the other way. I can tell you how relieved I was when you even told me you had an appointment. <laughs> I could tell on your voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the end of this tough road. But today, we'll celebrate. The birds are happy. The little things. I'm happy. The mental health expert I spoke with today says loneliness, of course, is still a concern. So make sure to connect with others safely. May it be virtually or over the phone because we're just not at the point yet where we can gather safely, even though we're getting there. It's getting there, Maddie. Great for you to share that story. It was great to see your dad and uh, hear his laughter. We're almost getting back to normal. It's on the horizon. Thanks, Maddie. Great story. Still ahead at six, the Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra kicks off their winter concert series tonight. We'll share how you can watch from the comfort of your couch. And we have alert days in the forecast for snow. Gary will tell us when it's expected to move through in your first born forecast.
Hoover's is a family restaurant. To me, that means being the place that puts a smile on everyone's face. We're famous for our cooked-to-order butter burgers and frozen custard made daily inside our restaurants. But we've always believed more menu options mean more ways to brighten your day. We source the finest chicken to bring you our tenders and chicken sandwiches. And our cheese curds. They're a Wisconsin tradition we're proud to share with you. So take the next meal shift off and let us take care of you. Welcome to Delicious. Dear Winter, I'm coming. My squad of 15 vehicles with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is ready to take you on. Safety's the name of my game, so you better bundle up. Toyota. Get 0.9% APR for 60 months on a new 2021 RAV4 or lease a new 2021 Highlander Hybrid for $319 a month. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. At American Family Insurance, we've always protected more than what you drive. We've protected and supported the dreams that drive you. Right now, that means extending our 10% savings on auto premium for all current and new auto customers through March. So you can get a little closer to your dream. Whether your dream is discovering new roads and new limits or supporting that dream. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Nice sleep center, Bob. What is a Bobopedic? I could tell you, but I'd rather show you. Oh, Bob's got a feel for your budget. They deliver right to your door. With 30 years of sleep experience, the best warranty, and so much more. Bob's Bobopedic, from your head down to your feet, it feels like no mattress you felt before. Wow! Uh... Uh-oh. Bob's Bobopedic. Pick up the latest issue of Madison Magazine for our top nurses tribute. A wake-up call on domestic abuse during COVID. Why more locals are saying bye-bye to booze. And exciting new monthly features. Madison Magazine on newsstands now. Wisconsin weather can be frustrating. Get the latest forecast, alerts, and detailed traffic reports from the News 3 Now team. On air, online, and download the Channel 3000 First Warn app. Be the first to know what's headed our way. The city of Madison was the first in the country to establish a recycling program. That was back in 1968, and city officials say we should be better at it by now. A recent problem was when a Madison recycling truck started on fire on the west side because something inside of it combusted, caught fire. Some common hazards are lithium batteries or propane tanks that tend to spark when punctured. Right now, 18.9% of what we put in that recycling cart is actually trash. It's stuff that has no business being in there at all. And so we can all do a little better job of making certain that we're following the recycling rules, because even though all of that trash may not be as dangerous as a battery or a propane tank, it still causes problems with the system. It can gum up the way the sorting mechanisms work. It can tangle things. And he says you can check the lid of your City of Madison recycling bid. Many have a printed list of what can be put inside, and you can find resources about proper recycling at cityofmadison.com slash recycling. The Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra launches its winter concert series tonight. WCO has made several unique changes to keep musicians playing during the pandemic, from virtual performances to drive-in concerts on the square. And the winter concert series has all been pre-recorded at the Sylvie. They're also launching a musician relief fund, asking the community to help raise $30,000 to support WCO musicians facing financial uncertainty. Um, one of the challenges that we face in the pandemic is that we can't have all the musicians on stage because of socially distant requirements. So these concerts will only have maybe half of our musicians play at any one time. So this fund will help subsidize some of the other musicians that weren't able to play for that concert. If you'd like to support the Relief Fund, you can donate online at wcoconcerts.org slash donate. The first of four performances in the WCO Winter Concert Series will be available beginning tonight at 730. You can stream it online for the following three days. Tickets are $30.
All right, with snow on the way, it'd be a good weekend to watch a concert from your couch. Gary has your first warm forecast. Gary? Yeah, we've got a cold night tonight. Tomorrow should start out dry, but by tomorrow afternoon, already snow will be approaching the Mississippi River to our west. And on future track, you can see it moving steadily so that by uh, midnight on uh, Saturday night, early Sunday morning, snow is pretty widespread across most of southern Wisconsin. It will continue overnight and then start to wind down pretty quickly on Sunday from west to east to flurries and some patchy freezing drizzle. Now, for those of you going up to Green Bay for the uh, Packers game on Sunday, by 2 o'clock, uh, just about game time, uh, you can see the back edge of the snow right about to the Green Bay area, so it should be winding down. But they're looking at uh, similar amounts that we're going to see here in southern Wisconsin. Then the second part of the storm develops to our south and west. By noon on Monday, notice it's still south of the Wisconsin-Illinois state line, so maybe more of a, a Monday afternoon, Monday night type event. You can see steady snow south of Madison, heavier snow just to our south across northern Illinois, and we're just on the northern fringes of it. This dry northeasterly wind flow will cut away at the snow on the northern part, so areas north of Madison may see no snow at all, and areas down near the Illinois state line could see a half a foot of snow if uh, everything uh, works out right. And it's possible, too, that storm could shift northward. We're still several days out, a lot of times these storms do move farther north if they get a little stronger than forecast. By early on Tuesday morning, notice the uh, snow starting to wind down. Snow from the Saturday night, Sunday morning snow event probably two to four inches through much of southern Wisconsin, maybe some five or six inches to uh, event, uh, to the north and west out toward the Dells, and then uh, lesser amounts down toward the Illinois state line. Winter weather advisories are in effect for uh, Saturday and Sunday, basically from southern Minnesota through all of uh, central Wisconsin. Future track snowfall for uh, the Monday storm system. Again, just south of the Illinois state line, you can see some pretty heavy totals. This is from the European computer model. The U.S. computer model also has heavy totals just south of the Illinois state line, maybe a little more light snow farther to the north. But again, this bears some watching because these storms sometimes can move farther north than forecast. So we have alert days in the forecast for a pretty uh, slam dunk type of event Saturday night and Sunday where we'll get several inches of snow Monday uh, afternoon, Monday night. That one's a little more iffy, but more likely south of Madison. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Look for the potential for our first below zero temperature uh, here in Madison. I'm going for a low of two below zero. We haven't got below zero yet this winter. Uh, every day so far this month, we've seen above normal temperatures until today. Then that uh, snow for Saturday night and Sunday and the potential for another storm system from Monday afternoon into Monday night. As we check out low temperatures last night, we were in the single digits, but notice these temperatures below zero. That colder air will be almost directly over us as we head into early tomorrow morning. So our forecast includes winter weather advisories for Dane County and areas to the west and north beginning late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night and then ending at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Morning. For tomorrow, look for morning sunshine, more clouds in the afternoon, high temperature of 22, probably not until sometime in the evening, and snow developing west of Madison late in the day. Total snow through uh, about noon on Sunday, one to two inches down toward the Illinois state line, maybe as much as five inches out toward Richland County and areas north and west of the Dells. We have alert days again in the forecast for Sunday and Monday, just some flurry chances on Tuesday, then another weak system on Wednesday, maybe some minor snow accumulations, another chance of snow from Saturday afternoon into Sunday morning of next weekend. And coming up in sports, getting over the hump. While the Packers say just reaching the NFC Championship game won't mean anything if they don't win. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. You never know what winter has in store. Ford SUVs help keep you prepared. Chilly mornings, you've got remote start. Slick roads, you've got confident control. Snowy terrain, shift drive modes on the fly. Whatever the forecast brings, Ford SUVs are built for weather. Choose four credit flex by on 2020 Escape. Get 0% APR for 66 with an increase in payments after the first 36 months, plus 3,000 back. At iMart Express, it's just the right price. Two pairs of glasses start under 40 bucks. Using insurance? We accept over a thousand plans, and using your benefits is as easy as one, two, three. No insurance? No problem. Glasses to fit your budget. It's just the right price. Only at iMart Express. At U.S. Cellular, we're building a powerful 5G network that works without interruption in the places you wouldn't expect. And with every plan at U.S. Cellular, you get access to 5G at no additional charge. So no matter where you are, U.S. Cellular's network always keeps you connected. 
in the places you need it most. At U.S. Cellular, all of our plans include 5G and get unlimited data for just $30 a month with four lines. U.S. Cellular. I'm a little old to count down the days, but my ski trip to Cascade Mountain with my cousin each year, so much fun. We used to pretend like we were flying. Now, we really do. My dad and my uncle like that we still <laughs> ski free. But Noah and I, we just have fun. See you there. Still a traffic jam. Just better views. Still your to-do list. Just getting more done. Still packing up? Just a little easier. The Chevy Silverado, making life's journey just better. Right now, get $4,750 cash allowance on this 2021 Silverado. Plus, current Chevy owners with an eligible GM credit card get an additional $1,750 total allowance. See your Badgerland Chevy dealer today. Hi folks, Saturday morning, just days after Inauguration Day, we take a look at some of the executive orders President Biden has signed so far. And we'll be taking a look at the weekend weather. Join us Saturday morning at 5 and 8. stranger to this spot. They reached the NFC Championship game last season only to come up short in San Francisco. Big difference this time around, the game is at Lambeau Field and the Packers had in Sunday's matchup on a roll. They won seven straight. The offense is clicking on all cylinders while the defense seems to be hitting its stride, allowing just 16 points per game in its last four contests. But all that means nothing if they can't get over the hump. Well, this is the pinnacle. You know, it mean everything. Obviously, this is what you Getting the game for it. This is why I started playing ball at eight years old. Um, you want to, you want to win championships, and uh, we is right there in front of us. You know, this game doesn't even matter if we don't get to um, the big game. Now we're here and we have fans, so it's pretty exciting to be here. Excited about Sunday and uh, you know, excited about the weather. It rarely happens at the Big Ten, but every once in a while a team gets a little rest during the game. That happened on Wednesday for Wisconsin. Up 21 in the second half against Northwestern, there was no need for Greg Gard to keep his starters on the floor with the game in hand. So he didn't. The Badgers are happy for any amount of extra rest. That's big, especially in the Big Ten, um, to not be able to uh, have to use so much of your legs there in the in the second half and late down the stretch. I think that's going to be big for us um, moving forward. It's always fun to see see uh, the guys that don't necessarily get out there every day on the court, and we're always uh, hoping hoping that they score. And it's, yeah, it's just awesome to have to have not necessarily nights off, but to get that extra rest. And Major League Baseball is mourning the loss of a legend today. Hank Aaron passed away at the age of 86. Hammer and Hank hit 755 career home runs, an MLB record that stood until 2007. Aaron started his career with the Milwaukee Braves when he was 20 years old. Both the Brewers and the Braves have Aaron's number 44 retired. That is an amazing career. He had 25 all-star appearances. Truly a legend. Sad passing for the baseball world. Let's go to Gary, final check. Well, we have winter weather advisories in effect for pretty much all of southern Wisconsin from Dane County to the north and west beginning late tomorrow afternoon for our western viewers and at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening for areas closer to Madison. All right, Gary, thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.